All right, let's begin, please, by putting the soles of your feet together. Hold on to your ankles or to your shin bones and begin to pull yourself forward, trying to sit up nice and tall. It might help you to close your eyes and try to visualize your pelvis. Look at your pelvic bone structure. Tilt it forward gently. Come off of your tailbone. Gently transfer the majority of your weight off of the back part of your sitting bones onto the front part of your sitting bones. And then look at your spine in your mind and imagine that your spine is a string of pearls. Look at the lowest pearl and envision a string coming through the lowest pearl, stretching up to the next pearl, making a little space, stretching up to the next pearl, the next pearl. Come on now, stretching up through the middle of your spine, stretching up through your upper spine, stretching up through your neck, lengthen, and pulling up through the crown of your head making you very, very tall. Gently ease your head back just a little bit and get a delicate stretch to the front of your neck. Bring your head back up into the upright position and begin to fold forward, bending at your hinges, at your hip joints. Rock from side to side. Try to lift your body weight and tilt it forward getting to the very front part of your sitting bones. Don't bend at your waist, bend at the hip joints. Pull yourself forward very gently, very gently. Try to feel it now, feel it in the hip joints. Feel it through the gluteus maximus, through your hip muscles, through the lumbar back. Don't worry about how far forward you go. You stay in your comfort zone, but just feel that deep stretch through the lower back. When you feel that you've tilted your pelvis as far forward as it's willing to go, then take the stretch into your upper back. Tuck your chin in toward your chest, round out your upper back, pull your head down gently toward your feet. Then lift up your head, line your neck up to your spine. Bring your torso into the upright position and extend your legs straight out in front of you. Sitting up tall, arms up, interlock your thumbs and begin to stretch. Take your mind into your shoulder joints and stretch through the shoulder joints. Separate your shoulder blades, stretch the muscles through your upper back. Now stretch through your elbow joints, stretch through your wrists and stretch through your middle fingers. Lengthen, lengthen. Now tighten up your stomach and begin to roll down onto your back. If your back is chronic, ease down onto your elbows and ease down with your knees bent. But if you're able to do this to develop more strength in the stomach, tighten up your stomach, have your feet flat, stomach tight, ease down gently coming onto your waist, Try to lower your spine to the floor one vertebra at a time. Shoulders down, head down, and bring your arms alongside of your ears and stretch. Push your heels away from your body. Stretch through your calves. Tighten your kneecaps. Tighten your quads. Flatten your stomach. Lengthen your waist, open up your ribs, stretch through the shoulder joints, through the elbow joints, and through your middle fingers. Lengthen your body and totally let go, completely release. Bring your arms alongside of your body. Turn your palms toward the ceiling. We're going to relax first. Wiggle. Lift your shoulders, wiggle through your spine, lift your hips, flex your knees, wiggle through your toes, your fingers. The more relaxed you can be before you begin to exercise, the greater the benefit of the exercise to your body. When you find a position that is really quite comfortable and take all the time you need just to move around until it fits, it just feels good to you. 
Then focus your attention into your heartbeat. Try to be aware of your heartbeat. And we're going to do a wonderful little relaxation breath, which is known as belly breathing. And you just inhale softly through the nose as you gently raise your stomach three to four heartbeats or three to four seconds. And then you exhale far more slowly as you lower your stomach six, eight or more heartbeats. It's a very shallow breath, a very soft breath. Shouldn't take any effort on your part. If you can think of a baby or a puppy or a kitten as they sleep, you'll find this is the kind of breathing that they do. So again, just get into your own rhythm, inhaling three to four heartbeats, exhaling six, eight or more heartbeats. The most important thing is to be sure that the exhalation is considerably longer than the inhalation. Make sure that the exhalation is very lengthy. Take your time with it. Never inhaling too deeply, but making sure the exhalation is considerably longer. It's quite a shallow breath. And then you begin to feel it. It's just like a natural tranquilizer. Now, try to be disciplined with your mind. For just the while that we're working together, make every effort to push away from the world. Allow your mind to begin to get calm and quiet and focused into your body. If it bothers your back to be lying flat on your back, feel free to just bend your knees and that will relax your back. Now focus all of your attention into the soles of your feet. Be aware of the temperature of your feet, the circulation in your feet. Now feel that all the tension and all the frustration is draining out of your feet through your heels. Let your feet dissolve. Now let go of your calves and let your thighs melt. Release your hips and your tummy. Let your back go and your chest. Let your fingers melt and let your arms go. Release your shoulders and your neck. Very gently turn your head to the right. Now turn your head to the left and press your ear into the floor. Keep your shoulders limp and back to the center. Tuck your chin into your throat and press the back of the neck into the floor. Stretch the cervical vertebra and release. Relax your facial muscles. Bend both knees. Have your feet flat on the floor. Arms out to the side. Tighten up your stomach and press your waist into the floor. That's a pelvic tilt. Tighten up, lift the tailbone slightly, and release. Again, stomach tight, a pelvic tilt. Press your waist into the floor, tailbone up, and release. One more time, stomach tight, a pelvic tilt. You'd be surprised when your back is just a little bit of a naggy backache, how easy this can make it feel how much more relaxed it can make it feel. Now relax. Now bend the right knee in toward your chest, placing your hands at the back of your thigh. Gently begin to squeeze your thigh into your ribs. Squeeze gently. Take your mind into your lower back. Stretch the low back. Draw the kneecap up toward your chin to get an additional stretch. Now push the thigh away from your body 
and gently straighten out your leg. Try to get your knee straight. Don't worry about how high you can get your leg. Just try to stretch through the calf. Reach up and hold. Hold. Keep your knee straight and breathe softly. You need to stretch out your hamstring. Don't worry about how high it is. Just keep it straight if you can. Bend your knee, left leg into your chest. Again, squeeze. Get your mind into your lower back. Feel that into your lower back. Draw the kneecap up toward your chin to stretch additionally through the low back. Lower your leg and gently straighten out your leg. Straighten out your knee and if possible, glide your hands up a little bit higher. Stay in your comfort zone. Don't force. It's so important. You've got to stay where you're comfortable. Even if you're way down here, if you're stretching that hamstring, that's what you're after. So don't worry about the height. And bend your knee and feet down. Good. Place your arms to the outside, palms flat. This will help you with stability. Have your ankle bones and your toe joints together, your knee joints together. Now, a pelvic tilt, stomach tight. Press your waist into the floor. Press your waist into the floor. And slowly drop both knees to the right, slowly. Keep your shoulders level. Keep your left shoulder down. Again, don't worry about how far your thigh is going in direction to the floor. It's just what are you feeling in your midriff section. And lift up. Stomach tight, pelvic tilt, and drop to the left, slowly, slowly. Take your time, take your time. Breathe softly and back up to the center. Even if it's just a minuscule amount that you're doing, just the littlest bit, I guarantee you it will help. Now arch your back, create a small arch in your lower back. And we're going to go again to the side. Keep the arch and drop your knees to the right, slowly. A pelvic tilt helps to stretch the muscles in your back. The arch helps to strengthen them. Now coming up, keep the arch in your back and drop both knees to the left. Take your time, take your time. Breathe softly, breathe softly and back up to the center and relax your back. Cross your right leg over the left and gently drop to the right. Press the upper knee into the lower knee. Press. Stay in your comfort zone. Make sure it feels good to you. Coming back up. Uncross left over right and drop to the left. Stretch, breathe softly, feel, feel what it's doing and back up. Uncross your knees. Now bend your knees in toward your chest, hold on to your shins and begin to gently squeeze the knees up Squeeze, squeeze. Try to lift the lower back off the floor. Bring your kneecaps up toward your chin. And then slowly lower, slowly lower, trying to come down one vertebra at a time. Please don't be discouraged if you can't do that quite yet. I promise in time you will. I promise, really. Put your hands on top of your knees and push the knees away from your body. Push away and try to create an arch in your lower back. Try to push the sitting bones into the floor. Arch your lower back. Then begin to rock from side to side. Rock, digging your bones into the floor. Into the floor. Just dig the bones in. You want to stimulate the circulation in your hips and your hip muscles. 
and then gradually begin to bring the knees in toward your chest. Come up slowly, bring the massage up, coming up toward your waist, coming up onto your waist, and coming above your waist. All the way up. Now slowly go back down again. Take your time, it's just a wonderful massage. Loosen up that poor old back. Now loosen it up, loosen it up. Take your time, take your time. Work your way back down, all the way down toward your tailbone. Way, way down. Then start making large circles with your knees, going all the way to the outside. All the way around, all the way around. Take your time, take your time. Make the circles a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller until ultimately you will be right at the small of your back. Take your time. It does feel so good. Now very slowly begin to make the circles larger. Going back out. Going back out. A little bit larger. All the way around. All the way around. Loosen up, loosen up, all the way, as big a circle as you can make. And then tighten up your stomach, and put your feet down, gently straighten out your legs, ease your arms out, let your body go limp, completely relax. And that's the end of the first lesson. All right, let's begin on lesson two. This is going to be considerably more of a workout, so please work only according to what your body will allow you. Be very gentle. Ease your legs out to the side. Come onto your hands. Ease down onto your elbows. And stretch out one leg and then the other. And ease down onto your stomach. This is one of the cobra poses. Coming down. Put your hands beneath your shoulders, your elbows in close to your rib cage. Put your forehead on the floor and then inhale. Skim the forehead, nose, and chin up off the floor. Come all the way up, but don't use your arms. Make sure you're using the lumbar back. And exhale, slowly lower. and relax completely for just a moment. Again, inhale, forehead, nose, chin up. Try to bring as much of your chest up off the floor as you can, but don't use your arms. Don't use your arms. Don't keep them up in the air either. Keep them down, but just don't push. And exhale, down. Relax just for a moment, and again. Inhale, forehead, nose, chin up. Exhale, ease down. Now that was contracting the muscles of your lower back, which will help to strengthen your back. Now we're going to go for more flexibility. So this time you do use your arms and your elbows. So inhale, forehead, nose, chin up, push up, come up onto your elbows chin up, but remember to stay in your comfort zone. Exhale, 
only come up as far as you are comfortable. Don't try to keep up with me. Again, inhale, forehead, nose, chin up, push up, and exhale, ease down. One last time, inhale, forehead, nose, chin up, and exhale, ease down gently, ease down gently. Remember, above all, it's a cinch by the inch. Don't try to get it all at one time. Now, put your palms beneath your shoulders. We're going to do the full cobra. Be extremely cautious and only go to where you know your body says this is good. Inhale, skim the forehead, nose, chin up, push, come up, hold. And exhale, ease down. Again, inhale. Push up. You find out just where you need your elbows to be, how bent they need to be to stay in your comfort zone. Pull your shoulders down. Don't crowd your neck. Exhale, ease down gently. One last time, push up and exhale, ease down. Good. Now push up onto your hands and knees. Walk your knees toward your hands and sit on your heels. Wrap your arms one over the other and fold forward. Rest your rib cage on top of your thighs. Rest your forehead on the back of your hand and relax your lower back completely. Always try to remember to counter posture. When you bend your body in one direction, the next thing you do is go in the opposite direction to keep the balance. Now, coming back up again, ease down onto your side and bring your legs out in front of you. If you have a chronic back, you may want to avoid this until your back gets a little bit stronger. Have your feet flat, have your toes down. Tighten up your stomach. Imagine there's a long rope hanging from the ceiling. Reach up and hold on to your rope. And slowly ease yourself down, sliding down the rope. Slide down the rope, stomach tight, coming onto your waist, dropping down one vertebra at a time. Easing down, easing down, shoulders down, head down. Good. Now again, hold on to your rope. Put your feet wherever they're the most comfortable to your body. Stomach tight, a pelvic tilt. Lift up your head and shoulders. Pull yourself up on the rope. Pull up, pull up. We want to develop strength in the abdominals so that it will give strength to your back. And then. Begin to ease down, just slide down, hold the rope and let the rope slide through your hands. Stomach tight, coming down gently onto your waist, dropping down one vertebra at a time. Shoulders down, head down. And again, stomach tight, pelvic tilt. Lift up your head, come up, ease up. Hand over hand, pull yourself up, develop the strength in the stomach muscles come way to the front part of your sitting bones and release. Now slide your feet around behind you. Come up onto your knees and onto your heels. Ease back and put your palms flat on the floor behind your back. And arch your spine. Inhale and bring your head back. Face the ceiling, squeeze a lemon between your shoulder blades, a good arch to your back. Exhale, bring your head back up to the upright position, torso forward, relax your back. Again, inhale, arch your back, ease your head back, face the ceiling, don't let your head hang. Use the muscles in your neck, squeeze a lemon between your shoulder blades. 
Exhale, lift your head. Come forward, relax your back. One more time. Inhale, arch, arch your back. Push your hands into the floor, squeeze a lemon between your shoulder blades. And exhale, come back up again. Now bring your hands a little bit closer into your body. This is going to be a little more difficult, so do be cautious. This is intended to strengthen your quads, your upper thighs. Tighten your stomach, lift your seat, lift your seat, arch your back, face the ceiling. Open up your chest, breathe softly, and ease back down again. It is very important to have strong quads to help your back. Again, stomach tight, lift up, lift up, coming up, up, open up your chest, face the ceiling, and ease back down onto your heels. Now, fold forward. Put your elbows on the floor. Bring your right leg behind you. Stretch your back, your right leg back. Stretch it out. Stretch your rib cage over your thigh. Stretch your arms forward, head down. Stretch, stretch through your hip. Stretch. Wonderful stretch for the gluteus maximus. Bring your hands back up. Change legs, right leg up left leg all the way back stretch now streamline those legs fold forward rib cage over your thigh ease your head down onto the floor take your time focus into stretching just keep stretching keep stretching and coming back up onto your hands Ease both legs back, lie down onto your stomach. Put your hands one on top of the other. We're going to do a variation of the locust. Resting your chin on the back of your hand. Bring your right leg up, tighten up your seat, point your toe, keep your knees straight. And low. Left leg up, point your toe. Tighten up your seat and lower. Relax completely. Right leg up, tighten up your seat, point your toe and lower. Left leg up, point your toe, tighten your seat and lower. Right leg up. Tighten your seat, point your toe, and lower. Left leg up, point your toe, tighten your seat, and lower. Good. Relax your back completely. Now put your hands below your shoulders. Push up, come up onto your hands and knees, and walk your knees toward your hands. Slide your feet out to the side and come to a sitting position. Legs out to the front. Put your feet flat, stomach tight, grab onto your rope, tighten up your stomach, and you know if you can't do the rope thing, go on your elbow onto your side and just ease down to a lying position. Easing down one vertebra at a time. Good. Arms out alongside of your body. Bring your feet in a little bit closer toward your seat. Have your ankle bones touching, your toe joints touching, your knee joints touching. Now, stomach tight, a pelvic tilt. Press your waist into the floor and gently lift up your tailbone, coming up, coming up. Coming up. Try to come up one vertebra at a time. Up and hold. Tighten up your stomach. Tighten up your hips. Tighten up your quads. 
Now slowly come down, one pearl at a time. Coming down gently, easing down, easing down. You're coming into a pelvic tilt. Allow your lower back to come down, come into your waist before your seat comes down. Now your seat is down. If that is difficult, you might prefer to separate your feet and your knees a little bit. Just make it work for you. Create your own variations throughout all of this because anything you do is better than nothing and that's, that's for sure. Now we're going to try it again but this time without the pelvic tilt. Just simply lift your torso. Lift your torso up. Come on up. Now do not press the neck into the floor. Keep the weight on the shoulder blades. Tighten up your stomach, tighten up your seat, tighten up your quads. And lower, easing down, easing down. Good, good. Now bring your knees in toward your chest. Wrap your arms around your shins. Begin to rock from side to side. Just loosen up your back, loosen up. Find the tempo that you prefer, how rapidly you want to go around or how very slowly and methodically. You might prefer to put your hands on top of your knees, but isolate. You must keep your mind into what you're doing. This is why it's so important. That's where the change is in the quality of your workout. Feel what you're doing. Get your mind into your back. How does it feel? What is the better speed? Is it better to just go side to side or is it better to do circles? investigate it and find out how your body responds. Just take your time with it though. Massage your back. Massage your back. Smooth, smooth. And then put your knees together, feet down. Push your feet away from your body as far as you can, as long as your toes remain flat on the floor. Tighten up your stomach, a good solid pelvic tilt. Lift up your head and shoulders, grab onto your rope, pull up, pull up, all the way up, good. And now we're going to come up onto your hands and knees. So again, bring both feet out to the side together. Come up onto your hands and knees. Walk your knees back. Place your palms beneath your shoulders. Separate your knees a comfortable distance apart. And first, you sway your back, sway your back, lift up, lift up your tailbone. And inhale, chin up. And then exhale, round out, round out, round out. Drop your head between your arms, push your hands and knees into the floor, draw your navel into your backbone. Inhale. Sway your spine, tailbone up, chin up, all the way up. And of course here again, like everything else, just go according to what your body allows you. Exhale. Round out. Round out. Push your hands and knees into the floor. Drop your head between your arms. Push. Inhale. Sway. Stay in your comfort zone, chin up, tailbone up, and exhale, round out, round out. Drop your head, push, inhale, sway, chin up, and exhale. Put your knees together, your feet together, ease down onto your heels and relax. Stretch out your arms. That was the angry cat. Now we will do the swan. So inhale, rotate your body forward. Stretch out your legs, bend your elbows as you bring your thighs and your pelvis onto the floor. Exhale, down. Inhale, skim the forehead, nose, chin up, way up, but watch where you want your elbows to be. 
Exhale, up onto your knees, up onto your tiptoes. Now stretch your back, go slowly, empty the air, stretch. Try not to let your hands drag. Rest your rib cage on your thighs, forehead down. Inhale, rotate forward, take your time. Top of the feet flat, ease your pelvis down, ease it down. Bend your elbows as you need to, as you need to. And exhale, down. Inhale, push up. Exhale, up onto your knees, up onto your tiptoes. Now just think of lengthen your muscles, lengthen, elongate, elongate. And forward. Stretch, streamline, take your time. Think of the word flow, flow. Everything you do in this workout, flow. It's not jerky, it's not forcing, it's not jagged. You just flow. Coming back up onto your hands and onto your knees. Walk your knees forward. Have your hands beneath your shoulders. Extend your right leg directly behind you onto your tiptoe. Glide your leg up, keep it in line with your body. Turn your head and make sure you don't have your leg way up high. Tighten up your seat and point your toe. And then bend your knee. Left leg back onto your tiptoe. Glide your leg up, point your toe, tighten up your seat, tighten up your stomach, and bend. Right leg back onto your tiptoe. Leg up, point your toe, tighten up your seat. And lower. Left leg back, onto your toe. Leg up, tighten up your seat, point your toe. Breathe softly, breathe softly. And lower. One more time. Now all these exercises in this part of the workout, of course, are intended to strengthen. So don't be discouraged. If you are in pain, just stay with that first part. I know if you're in pain, you don't want to do any of this, but you need to. So just stay with lesson one and just keep it real easy. And there's no question that it'll be a lot better for you. Now slide your feet out to the side. Come to a sitting position. Legs out in front. Put the soles of your feet together. Hold on to your ankles. Pull yourself up, get off of your tailbone, rotate your pelvis slightly forward. Sit to the front part of your sitting bone, pulling up very, very tall. Feel the strain coming through the lowest pearl, up to the next pearl, the next pearl, all the way up to the top. Through the crown of your head, very tall. Exhale then, and begin to fold forward, bend at your hinges. Don't bend at your waist. Bend at your hip joints, at your hinges. Gently stretch through your lower back. Only go as far forward as feels good to you. Ease down. Round out your upper back now. Stretch your upper back. Let yourself go limp. Let your head hang. And in the quietness of your own mind, try to evaluate how do you feel now compared to when we started out. And that's it. All right, now this is what I call the cheat sheet, which is great, I think. If there are parts in that video that you are not able to work through, Chris Kabinga, who is a physical therapist and has been an invaluable aid to me, has come to my studio a number of times and helped my students achieve poses that otherwise they couldn't do. One of the things that Chris has mentioned is when we start out with the clamp, you remember sitting, as I say, to the front part of your sitting bones. And a lot of people have a great difficulty in going forward. So Chris has something that will help, which is? Let's use a towel and we'll place the towel under her hips like this. What this will do, it will move her hips up and her hips will be higher than her feet. And go ahead, Priscilla, let's do the stretch. And it will put less stress on her lower back. 
Oh, it's wonderful. It really does make a tremendous difference. And I guess, Chris, it's important to note that the towel should be right at the very front of the sitting bones. That's correct. Not to sit too far back no. on it, but right at, right at the edge of the towel. So this is for you all. And even other exercises that you do, like trying to do full lotus, if you are a yoga practitioner, uh, people can't do it. But if you're sitting up on something like this, you would be surprised how much easier it makes it. So cheat sheet number one. All right, easing out. Something else that Chris talked about was uh, people with a protruded head. Or yes, a some, some people you need to keep in mind might have some neck problems. And when you lay on your back, you could use a pillow. Now the pillow needs to support the head and also the neck. So I would tuck it under the neck. Make sure the pillow is not under the shoulders. Mm -hmm. And you can stay in that position to do all the exercises when you lay on your back. Uh -huh. So that people that have a lot of muscle even in their backs, yes. if, then their head feels really uncomfortable if you don't have this kind of support. I would not use a pillow which is too thick or two or three pillows. I would just use one thin pillow and that should uh, help you already. Okay, so that takes care. Okay, let's that. leave the pillow here and there's another exercise when you bend your knees and you cross you put one leg and you cross like this after your stretch is finished what I recommend is to uncross first and then to come up this will be much easier people have usually don't have problems coming down they have problems coming up if you stretch the other way you do the same thing you just pull down you stretch and then you uncross first and then, and then come up. You come up. Mm -hmm. So that does take a lot of stress away. So remember that one too. It is a lot easier to go down than it is to come up. So uncross before you come up if your back is stressed. All right. On your sit up, you use mm -hmm. the image of a rope and that is very right. good. Uh -huh. For some people who have too much back pain, what I recommend to do is as you come up, you need to mentally, you need to keep in mind to have your tailbone down on the floor. Okay. On a regular sit-up, you will feel your tailbone coming up. Mm. In this situation, you need to keep it down and let's see what happens. Yes. You will not go as high mm -hmm. as you did in your But it's sequence. still getting the work done. Yes, of course. And would they want the pillow even for a sit-up? Uh, you can keep it. If you still have neck problems, that will be fine. Okay. So this so, is a great way of doing it. Make sure you keep your tailbone uh -huh. down mm -hmm. and, and, then, come up. and that will still exercise your abdomen. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Uh, let's change positions um, and let's um, lay on your stomach. Or the cobra poses. The pillow here comes in handy again because you can use it under your abdomen. What this does in her position the pillow will decrease the arch in her back. Now arching your back is a good exercise, but some people it might be too much at first. So what I recommend is to use one pillow under her abdomen and this will decrease the arch in her lower back. And you could still do the same exercise. And it makes it easier too. It, it does seem to help a lot because you get that extra support. And as you get better and better and better, then you will slowly get rid of all of these props. Right, Chris? Yes. One more position. Mm -hmm. On this, the sternum bend that we did, I do know from experience, and particularly men, men are more tightly muscled than women. A lot of men cannot sit on their heels, or people who might be carrying a little bit of extra weight. So what you do in that case? Just use a towel again, which you place on the heels and that will help to support if you're not able to reach down and sit on your heels. Then you can reach back and still get a very nice stretch and have that added support for your back. And I think that pretty much covers it. Yes. Uh, the whole thing, as, as Chris has been so instrumental, be sure that you stay in your comfort zone. I can't ever say that enough. Work with it patiently and slowly and there's no question in my mind but that you definitely will get better. So thanks again, and until next time, bye.